everybody. We're gonna do a quick tag video, uh, cause I don't know what else to do. I don't know what to do! This week, so we're doing the evil cat book tag. Cats are terrifying, everyone knows that. Which easily could be transferred to the evil bird book tag. There are 10 questions to this. I thought it was really funny. I saw that Break Even Books had done this and it apparently came from a WordPress. Uh, and the WordPress belongs to ZZ with books. Apparently that is the original creator. Uh, and then Break Even found it and he's like, I gotta do this. And I'm like, you know what? I gotta do this too. <laughs> Now, I, I've decided to make this challenge a little bit more challenging by trying to pick books, only the ones that I've picked from this year. Now, granted, I have currently read 106 books, so I have a good amount to choose from, but I will say these were very difficult to pick, and I'm also trying not to double up on any of them. Even though several of these, one in particular, is like most, most of them. Yeah, uh, <laughs> not all of them, but most of them. It is kind of an evil cat book. I would say if I had to classify a character as an animal, it would be that character from this book that I will talk about later. So without further ado, question number one, knocking shit off high places, a book with a cliffhanger. I was trying to think of who had the worst cliffhanger that I read this year and not worse as in like, oh, it was stupid and terrible, but like got me going and like, I need to know what happens next. And that was The City of Dusk by Tara Sim. Now, some people don't really like this book. I ended up really enjoying it. I don't know. But a lot of people were like, it's not adult enough. And for someone who doesn't like two adulty books, that's probably why it worked for me. But there is a cliffhanger. There is some shocking stuff that happens at the end of this. And I, I need to know the next one. I think the next book is called The Midnight Kingdom. And it comes out in the summer, I think. August? August. And I'm very, very excited. I did win it in my pre-orders, I'm waiting to see if Fairy Loot is doing a matching set for it because this was in the Fairy Loot adult subscription box. Actually, like a lot of these are Fairy Loot adult subscription box books. <laughs> City of Dusk, it's, I think it's really fun. It's got a bunch of POVs. It's got kind of this necromancy side of power and magic. So I super enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Question number two, Howling at 3 a.m., a book you didn't sleep to finish. Long night. I don't know. Okay. This was a difficult one because there was a couple, but actually between this one and the next one that I picked, I it was it was difficult to pick who was gonna be this prompt, but the other one worked for it, so better. So anyway, uh, by the sheer knowledge that I tabbed it, you can tell that this was a book I really couldn't put down, and that is The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy by Megan Bannon. Uh, this is Megan Bannon's adult, again, another fairy loot adult subscription. Um, it is a very kind of cozy fantasy that also deals with death. <laughs> there's a lot of, there's a lot of death in this pile. <laughs> Uh, but it's super cute. It's a fantasy romance with a girl who is an undertaker, hence the undertaking, uh, and a marshal. And there's these very cool, like very Ghibli-like characters in this. While it still has some higher stakes and emotional turmoil, it's very cute and I'm super satisfied by it. And while there's not a sequel coming to us, there is a companion coming out for two other characters that are mentioned in this. And I'm very, very, very ecstatic about that because I just loved this. I think I had one complaint about it and that's it. The one complaint I had is right in the beginning because even though they're, they're, it's an enemies to lovers kind of thing, I, I don't like it when characters can, they're like, oh, I hate them, but they're too hot. You know, oh man, that person's just so hot, but I hate, I, we don't need commentary on that. Like, okay, we get it. Um, that's just a, a, a small nitpicky thing that for me, but otherwise I was absolutely obsessed with this book. Another book I was obsessed with is coming up. Question number three, hiding before a vet visit, a book with a self-destructive character. And I don't know how much more self-destructed you can get than actual Lucifer in Angels Before Man by Raphael Nicholas. This is currently an indie book uh, and it's absolutely fantastic. The literary prose of this, and I'm not a lit fic kind of girl, but damn, is this good. Haha, <laughs> damn. Get this Lucifer, get it. But yeah, Lucifer, very self-destructive character. It all 
also, you could argue that good old Mike is a self-destructive character, too. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, I'll pick this book up. But this was also a book you couldn't sleep to finish. This was one I, I really could not put down. It was very difficult to not. I had to set it down because I was in the middle of a readathon and that was rough. All right, question number four. The turd dangling from the behind. A sequel that was a bit uh, turd. And that would actually be the last book that I just finished, which was Heart of the Sun Warrior by Su Lin Tan. I was already disappointed with Daughter of the Moon Goddess because I thought the main character, everything just was so conveniently done for her. And I just wasn't very, it, 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 I, I couldn't even suspend my disbelief by her path, especially in the beginning of the book. Just put some fucking imagination into it, man. Now, I started out liking this a lot. And then what we got in the end of this, I was very unhappy with. And I, I, no, I was not okay. And even when, like, it just, I, there's a there's a trend, because I feel like the book, the other book I'm reading right now is doing this too, this new trend of ignoring what you've set up in the beginning and not following through, and instead just being a twist, especially in the case of, like, love triangles. I know, don't argue. I know everybody doesn't want to call it a love triangle anymore, but it just, it's fine. Uh, I know it's, it's weird to say a love arrow or a love because a love arrow sounds like it's just a one person. I don't know. I, I'm going to keep saying love triangle, whatever. Um, but it's doing this thing where it's, it's, yeah, it's not setting up for what the canon in the beginning is. And it's like, it's, I don't know if it's doing it to purposely flip you on your head or if it actually makes sense for the characters. I have read other books that have done it well, this one, I don't believe it. I just don't. Yeah, I was not, was not happy with this sequel. And apparently there's going to be a third one, but I think it's just a collection of, of little short stories about the characters and I have no interest in reading it. Fuck this, I'm going back to the show. Because that, and then you didn't even get to savor the ending. It like shows you where they're going to go, but like you don't actually get the reunion you get the, oh, she could potentially have that reunion, but she's not going to do it now. That just is unsatisfying to your readers who do ship that couple, like, the hell. Yes. Question number five, puking on the carpet, a book with a betrayal. And I thought a really good one for this, again, another fairy loot, is The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshni Chokshi. I, I did enjoy this book. There's a lot of betrayals in this, especially with our characters of Indigo and Azure. And there's one specific betrayal that had me heated. Fucking night shot, fuck. Oh. Uh, heated. Ah. And then there's a shocking betrayal that had me happy. <laughs> So there is a lot of that in this book, and I, I did enjoy it. Again, another book that some people are really hating on, and I don't really know why. I get it if it's not just your taste, but I don't know. I feel like a lot of people are just choosing to hate YA writers who move into adults and argue about their writing, and I'm like, I'm not here for that. This is good stuff. Oh, that's some damn good marmalade. Even though it made me angry a lot. Like, for the majority of the book, I had furrowed angry brow. Uh, but then I was satisfied by the ending. So it was fine. <laughs> Question number six. Dragging in live animals. A book with shocking violence. What did you do to him? Passive aggression. It was very difficult to find this. Because most of the books that I read that, I, that have violence in them, it's not so shocking. I will say... Even though I knew this book was technically classified as horror, that's not its main genre. And it, it, the, the type of like gore horror that happened was very gruesome. No, 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 God, this isn't happening! And that is Zebulon Finch at the Edge of Empire by Daniel Krauss. Oh, sorry, The Death and Life of Zebulon Finch at the Edge of Empire by Daniel Krauss. It's a very long title. It's a very long book. Um, but I did kind of zoom through this. It reads very fast, despite the length of it. Um, this is a historical fiction. It is a guy who gets killed and then kind of remains the undead 
Um, so he, he just is existing through time and so you go through history uh, with him. You go all the way through World War One into like the um, the beginnings of movies and stuff and it ends right at World War Two. I think it ends right after, right before Pearl Harbor, um, if I remember correctly. And then there is a second book, which I do own and do intend to read, but like some of the horror in this is excruciating and like, bleh, you know, that kind of stuff. All right, question seven, looking you in the eye before misbehaving. Mambo. A book with a character desperate for attention. Hi all. Now this is the book that can be a lot of these. This is also a book you didn't sleep to finish, a book with a self-destructive character, a book with a betrayal, uh, a book with some shocking violence because there is near the end. Oh, I wouldn't say it's too shocking violence, but it kind of fits. A book with a character desperate for attention, uh, and a book with a w wicked MC that you like, which is a later question. So this one checked off like six things for this. And that is... Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. This is a brand new release. I just got it the other day and immediately went home and read it. Lena also went home and read it. Ian also went home and I think is still reading it. But <laughs> I was addicted to this. The main character steals the work of her dead fre frenemy right after she dies in front of her and steals her, her manuscript because she's pretentious and writes everything on a typewriter, so there's no copies of it. Steals it, steals her fame. If you're not going to be Jim anymore, can I be Jim? Kind of makes it so that she's a little bit looking more like she's of Asian descent, which is why yellow face. Racist. Even though she's white as white can be, and it is unhinged, it is crazy. This character just keeps, and she, it, the fun part is seeing like, how she justifies herself, even though as a reader you're like, what are you doing? And it's just this spiral of self-destructive behavior. Um, and it's just, oh, it's a wild ride. Wild ride, highly recommend, guys. Question number eight, shredding things, a book with a destructive character. So not self-destructive, but destructive. And I've chosen The Temperature of Me and You by Brian Zepka. There is a, characters that literally yeah, you know, gotta blow things up on accident. No, don't shoot! I'm just a stowaway! And light things on fire on accident. And melt things on accident. Shit, sorry, I'm about to I'm I'm so 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 blowing so stuff up. There's a lot of destruction. It's very cute though, and I did enjoy it. Um, I don't want to spoil why, why they can do those things. It is also a gay romance, um, and it's a little bit sci fi, contemporary stuff <laughs> but it's not aliens i can tell you that i went into this thinking this was aliens and it's not aliens but i really really enjoyed it and <laughs> just all the just the dairy queen alone the poor dairy queen question number nine has never been fed never a series you can't get enough of and for me that is the mark of the least by kendra Merritt. i adore this series so so much i am intending to read the next book in this coming up very very soon um this is the second book in the series. I have read the first book, By Winged Chair, which I absolutely adored. I did adore this one, not as much as By Winged Chair, but I just love her characters. I love everything Kendra does, really, because I've read some other stuff by her, and I, I can't get enough of this series. I hope it never ends. Where's the next one? And this question was really, really, really difficult. And it's question 10. Be so cute you forgive them anyway. A book with a wicked MC you like. Now, see why yellow face <laughs> Like you kind of end up liking her a bit, even though she's absolutely a nightmare. But I didn't really have like an evil character, but wicked doesn't necessarily mean that they're evil. They just they don't really behave badly. Or as I like to call it, the art of fuckery. And that I'm gonna give to Amina from The Adventures of Amina Al Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty. Uh, Amina's a pirate, okay? She done some stuff. She's seen some shit. You're not, she's not all holy good. I'm a murderer! She's a great character. Now she is the protagonist and she is kind of a hero. Um, but you know, she's done some bad things. You know? <laughs> she's been selfish. So I'll forgive her all of that because she's a great character and I adore her. 
But that's the closest I could get to this one. I don't read a ton. Now I have other books I've read in the past that would fit this better, like The Young Elites. Excellent example of that. Um, but yeah, <laughs> again, also Angels Before Man. It's Lucifer, all right? I love them though. <laughs> but I'm gonna give this, again, a fairy loot. That's four fairy loot books out of the 10. So there you go. That is the evil cat tag. Everyone knows cats are very evil because they steal children's breath. Uh, feel free to do this. I don't know if anybody wants to, if you want me to tag you in doing so. Uh, I don't know how many people I know are still making videos. Um, but if you would like to, and if you're reading this, I think like uh, Brooklyn Reads, if you're watching this, you can do it because you, you make videos. Who else still makes videos? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, yes, you can consider yourself tagged by me personally, uh, if, even if I don't remember who's making videos or not anymore in the booktube community that I'm in on my corner of the internet, so cool. <laughs> I think I will officially tag Brooklyn Reads. You're tagged. Haha. -ha. Suck on them apples. I don't know. That was weird. Okay, all the links are in the description. Go check out my Kofi page. If you want to support me as a content creator, I would super duper appreciate it. Commissions are open and the shop is open. I'm gonna go now. Bye. I said no, 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 what? What do you want to do? No, why must you try to ruin my life? You really don't want me to get my deposit back. You are banned, banned to the cage, cause she can't behave herself. Blah, 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 blah.